I have a feeling that this year ay balak mong ayusin yung yung Bible study. Kasi last year, malamang hindi ka masyadong nakapagbasa ng maayos for any reasons. Para mapag-isipan mo na ba ano yung mga dahilan mo kung bakit hindi masyadong maganda ang Bible reading mo last year. So, in this episode, pag-uusapan natin 5 reasons why you're not reading your Bible regularly. That's coming up here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find their way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. If there is one book na pinaka-importante sa buhay mo bilang isang Kristiyano, that has got to be the Bible. There is a reason kung bakit ito ay tinatawag na manual ng ating buhay. Kasi dito nga natin mahahanap yung mga bagay na dapat nating paniwalaan at mga bagay na dapat gawin para ating masunod ang kalooban ng Panginoon. But I know we're living in the 21st century at meron tayong kanya-kanyang mga rason kung bakit hindi tayo nakakapagbasa ng salita ng Diyos on a regular basis. That is why I decided in this video na pag-usapan natin kung ano yung mga common na mga rason bakit hindi nagbabasa ng Bible ang maraming mga Kristiyano. And my goal for this video ay ipakita ito sa iyo at maipaunawa ang importansya at kahalagahan ng pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. So let's get started with number one. It's boring. Alam mo kapatid, kung iniisip mo ang Biblia ay isang libro na nakakaantok, nakakainip, boring basahin, ay hindi kita i-judge dyan. Naiintindihan kita. At kung sinubukan mo dati na magbasa ka ng Biblia, gamit ang cellphone mo o yung actual na Bible, at naka <laughs> at nakahiga ka at naranasan mong nalaglag sa mukha mo ang Biblia ay uh, relate na relate tayo dyan. And here's the reason why. The Bible is at least 2,000 years old. In fact, it can be as old as 3,500 years old. Kaya naman, napakahira para sa atin na maintindihan ang ibig nitong sabihin. Idagdag mo pa dyan na namumuhay tayo sa 21st century in the age of social media kung saan paiksi ng paiksi ang attention span nating mga tao at dahil dyan ay lalo na tayo nawawalan ng ganang basahin ang salita ng Diyos. The gap is too significant but that doesn't mean that it cannot be bridged. Kapatid, pag-isipan mo to. Ang katotohanan, hindi boring ang Bible. Kasi kung boring ang Bible, why is it the best-selling book in the world selling over 5 billion copies worldwide? Pag kinompare natin yan sa isa sa mga best-selling fictional books, yung Don Quixote, na nakabenta ng 500 million, ay kita natin na talaga namang considerably mas maraming nakapagbasa ng Biblia. So, Yung pagiging boring nito, I can argue na hindi siya boring kasi bakit siya babasahin ng bilyong-bilyong mga tao kung inaantok lang sila. The truth is, the Bible is alive and it speaks to our very core. Tignan natin ang sinasabi ng Hebrews chapter 4. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. What this verse says is that God's Word distinguishes what we human beings cannot do on our own, the godly and the ungodly. It discerns what is acceptable to God and what isn't. More importantly, it gives us the power, the ability to discern God's will for our lives. Diba lagi naman nating tanong yan? Paano natin malalaman ang will ng Lord para sa atin? Well, I have a news flash for you. You will not know it unless you read your Bible. Moreover, if we truly understand and appreciate what God has done for us, I don't think His words will seem lifeless to us. So, let me give you a suggestion. Instead of thinking that the Bible is ancient writing, something that you can't relate to, isipin mo na ito ay 
love letter ng iyong amang nasa langit na gustong ihayag ang kanyang sarili sa iyo. And in this book, makikita mo yung mga pangako niya at yung mga bagay na kailangan mong gawin para maranasan mo ang buhay na ipinapangako niya sa iyo. If you think of the Bible this way, sa tingin ko ay magbabago ang pananaw mo at hindi mo nasasabihing boring magbasa ng Bible. Number two, I can't understand it. Given the fact was written thousands of years ago, ay talaga naman maiintindihan ko ang hirap nga niyang unawain. Idagdag mo pa dyan, isinulat ito sa mga lengguaheng hindi naman natin naiintindihan. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek. Plus, yung culture nila ay hindi talaga tayo makakarelate. But more than the differences in culture, language, and time, ay merong mas importanteng dahilan kung bakit hindi natin naunawaan ang salita ng Diyos. And that is because it is spiritual. Tignan natin ang sinasabi ng 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. What Paul refers to here is a person who belongs to the world. For example, unbeliever. Ang problema ay hindi intelektual at hindi rin moral kundi is spiritual. What Paul is trying to say here is that God's word is spiritual, therefore it can only be understood through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16 ay sinasabi ng Panginoong Jesus na ang banal na espiritu ay tutugudong sa atin para maunawaan ang kanyang mga salita. So, outside of the help of the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to understand what the Bible means. The Holy Spirit guides us into all the truth and helps us understand what it means and helps us apply biblical principles to our daily lives. So, my friend, kapag sa tingin natin ay hindi natin naiintindihan ang salita ng Diyos, don't you think na ang kailangan natin gawin ay manalangin at humingi ng wisdom sa Diyos instead of just giving up, reading? Number three, it makes me feel uncomfortable. One of the things that the Bible does to us is that it convicts our sins. And most of us don't feel comfortable when they are being confronted with their sins. Fact of the matter is, we don't even want to talk about our secrets, let alone expose our sins, right? But here's a fact. The purpose of God's Word is to comfort us. But we have to understand, before it will comfort us, it will first confront us. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Paul says here that the Scripture has a fourfold purpose. For teaching, for reproof, for correcting, and training in righteousness. Anyone who has seriously studied the Bible has been confronted by its teachings. It hurts our pride, which makes us uneasy. Nakita niyo po ba sinabi ni Paul that we should be trained in righteousness? Well, the following verse also tells us na dapat tayo ay magiging useful or kagamit-gamit sa Panginoon. Well, by default, that's not possible because our lives are filthy. That's why we first need to be instructed, to be rebuked, and to be corrected so that we can be trained in righteousness. Kailangan muna malinis tayo ng Panginoon from the inside out. Kailangan matanggal muna yung mga wrong beliefs natin, pati yung mga bad habits natin, bago tayo magamit ng Panginoon sa kanyang ministeryo. And here's the thing, change is always uncomfortable. Sino ba sa atin ang naging komportable sa pagbabago, especially sa first stages nito? Wala naman, di ba? So, what you need to do, my friend, is to expect that as you read the Bible, it will confront your sin. And when you do, you must face it with humility, ask the Lord for forgiveness, and ask Him to give you the strength to do 
what is supposed to be done. Number four, I don't have the time. Perhaps this is one of the most common excuse that na naririnig ko kapag kinatanong ko yung mga tao, bakit hindi ka nakakapagbasa ng salita ng Diyos? Whether it's work, school, or household chores, the list goes on and on, and we don't seem to run out of excuses. I understand these reasons, but, but if I ask you to give me your phone and check your screen time, what will I discover? How much time do you spend watching, checking your social media accounts, or exchanging chat messages with someone? Fact of the matter is, we all are busy. I guess no one will argue with that. Pati nga mga tambay ay nagsasabing, ay, busy ako. Perhaps it's true, perhaps not. But to say that we don't have time to read God's Word is more of a priority issue rather than a time issue. Kasi sa tingin natin, hindi masyadong importante ang basahin ng salita ng Diyos. May mga bagay na mas importante kesa dito. And that's where the problem comes. My friend, I know that you have good intentions, that you want to grow and become a mature, fruitful believer. But in order for you to do that, you must labor in God's Word. Kailangan mo umabot dun sa punto na priority yung pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Truth is, kung mag-e-effort lang tayo sa pagbabasa ng Bible, nakatulad ng effort natin sa pag-suspend uh, natin ng oras sa social media, I think ay makikita natin talaga yung mga priceless na treasures ng salita ng Diyos at hindi na natin magiging issue yung hindi natin paglago sa buhay kristyano natin. Let's read Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it, like silver, and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. And wisdom is both a gift and a task. Yes, the Bible tells us to ask for wisdom, pero sinasabi din ang salita ng Diyos na kailangan nating hanapin ang karunungan. And that, my friend, takes time and effort. Number five, I don't feel like it. Ang dami ko na po narinig ng mga kristyano na, Pastor, gusto ko pong lumago. Gusto ko pong maging fruitful na kristyano. Pero, ayoko po magbasa ng Bible. <laughs> my friend, anything of value requires discipline. May it be in the world of sports, in military, politics, business, and yeah, even spiritual life. Marami sa atin gusto nating lumago bilang mga kristyano, but are we really ready to pay the price? In order for us to reach our spiritual goals, ay kailangan nating magtsaga at disiplinahin ang mga sarili natin. I know, setting up an alarm early in the morning and actually waking up to it, hindi mo lang pinipindot yung snooze, can be quite demanding, especially kung una-una mong gagawin ay mananalangin at magbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. But that is exactly what you need to do in order for you to reach your spiritual goals. You have to be at a certain level of spiritual discipline for you to be transformed by God's Word. Consider what Paul has to say to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24-27 Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all these things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I don't run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. In this passage, Paul is using an athletic metaphor to explain how he lets go of his rights in order for him to win people for Christ. He gave up things that he was otherwise entitled to na nagpapakita na kanyang self-sacrificing effort para lang makatulong na ma-advance o mapalawak ang kaharian ng Diyos. Using the imagery of an athlete, 
ay ipinapaliwanag dito ni Paul ang disiplina na pinagdadaanan ng isang atleta para mapanalunan ang isang wreath. Yung isa yung uh, leaf o dahon na inilalagay dun sa ulo ng mga atleta na nagsisignify na sila ang nanalo. However, that thing perishes at uh, nakakalimutan din yung mga pangalan ng mga nananalo. That is why Paul stresses out that he is working hard so that he can earn a prize that is priceless and eternal, Christ-likeness. In the same way, if we have spiritual goals, we have to work for it. We have to work hard for it. Keep in mind that grace does not cost us anything because Christ already paid the price. But Christ-likeness is a totally different thing. It requires discipline. It requires time and effort. And the fundamental discipline that we need to be more like Christ is reading our Bibles daily. I'm hoping na nakatulong po sa inyo ang five tips na ito. And from this point on, ay gaganahan na po tayong magbasa ng salita ng Diyos. And if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our official Facebook page. With that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.